Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Louis Murillo. I am a professor of psychology at uh, McDaniel College and a lecturer of neuroscience at Elte University in Budapest. Um, this chat is intended to help you gain some clarity about um, possibilities for studying medicine. Now, I guess the first thing that you need to be clear about is why do you want to study medicine? Uh, medicine is a very, very demanding profession. It's a fascinating profession. It's a profession that absolutely requires a great deal of personal ethics and a high level of scientific rigor. If your reason for going into medicine is that your parents are pushing you into it, uh, perhaps that's not sufficiently strong a reason. I should also tell you that medicine is not the healthiest of professions. It's a high risk profession. It's a profession uh, where, ironically, people smoke a lot, people sometimes drink a lot, and there's a high level of stress. So, having said that, so having you, having forewarned you about the not so Romanesque and romantic aspects of this profession, let me tell you some of the beautiful aspects about medicine. Uh, medicine opens up a world of new experiences to you. Very frequently in TV series, we have the impression that a medical doctor is just somebody who works in patient, with, in patient care, so works with uh, patients. Um, but in reality, medicine is a profession that prepares you for all kinds of uh, uh, activities. Um, a medical doctor has an excellent background in uh, biomedical science, has an excellent background in very frequently in pathology, in general biology, and so a medical doctor, and we could say that also of a specialty of a pharmacist or even a veterinarian, um, can also do a lot of work in research, uh, work uh, in uh, NGOs, uh, administrative work, can do teaching, can do research. Presently, by the way, uh, uh, an area where there is a great deal of demand. Okay. My own background, by the way, is in research. I am a former assistant of anatomy at the University of Fribourg, where I was a researcher at the Institute of Anatomy and Special Embryology. Subsequently, I had the same position in Lausanne, in Switzerland, and after um, I was uh, a researcher at the Karolinska Institute, which is the main medical university in Sweden. And presently, I teach in the pre-medical program of McDaniel College in Budapest. What are your options and what are the best ways to prepare for medical studies? Okay, here's where things get more specific and perhaps more interesting. Um, arguably, we could say that the best preparation for going into a medical faculty, and not the only but certainly one of the best preparations for going into a medical faculty is um, getting an IB diploma. An IB diploma is internationally recognized. Um, so usually wherever in Europe and North America you choose uh, to study medicine, those faculties will typically recognize uh, the uh, international baccalaureate diploma. Is that the only way to access medical studies? No, because uh, you can also access medical studies with your national leaving diploma, with your high school degree. However, things will be more difficult uh, because medicine is a profession where there's a lot of uh, protectionism. And that means that each country has its own procedures, let us say, protecting the quality and the personnel who are working in that field. And therefore, if you want to study medicine in Germany, you will usually have to have a German Matura. If you want to study in Spain, you usually will have to have a Spanish Bachillerato. If you don't, there are special procedures in every country for checking out whether your own country's leaving diploma is equivalent. And usually that recognition of equivalencies can be a bit of a um, a uh, tedious process and it can take some time, all right? Uh, if you want to cut to the quick and just access all the best medical faculties in the world, what I recommend to you is to do an IB diploma and to do so choosing higher level chemistry, biology, and one more field, usually mathematics or physics, um, 
so that um, you have your best chances of entering universities. Okay, in the segment that comes next, I want to talk to you about the best options that you have for studying medicine, beginning with Europe, okay? All right, so there's uh, the luxury option, there is uh, the difficult option, and there's the realistic option. Forgive me for this caricatural splitting of things, uh, but I think it might be helpful in uh, categorizing a vast mass of data. What I call the deluxe option is uh, the option that many students dream of doing, which is um, to study medicine in an English-speaking country. In Europe, that would be in the UK. I call it the deluxe option because um, studying medicine has become extremely expensive and also very, very selective studies to access um, in the UK. It has become very, very expensive because unfortunately in the aftermath of Brexit, let me quote you the exact numbers which I have here for you. If you are not an English citizen, you are paying £42,750 per year in tuition fee. So do the math. That's a lot of money, all right? Uh, if you multiply that by six years of study, you can see that this is this is the cost of a quite nice house, maybe not in Mayfair or some beautiful district of London, but you can get nice places, sometimes even two of them, for this kind of money. So this is the deluxe option. Academically, England, no doubt, offers very, very good possibilities. In fact, one of the universities, more than one of the universities that we represent, um, have some of the top ranking medical programs. So, so England, great option, highly selective, and you better have a lot of money. Um, if you are English, however, if you have a, a UK pass, uh, uh, not just English, but a UK pass, then um, the costs are, of course, much lower. They are in the order of £9,250 per year. Still a hefty amount. Um, all right. Um, um, speaking of deluxe, let me tell you that um, it is possible to study medicine in English um, in the, uh, the Netherlands. So there are several excellent universities that offer a program in English. Um, uh, for example, the University of Groningen. Um, here again, there's a very important difference whether you are a EU, an EU citizen or not. Uh, if you are a non-EU citizen, we're paying 32,000 uh, euro of tuition per year. However, if you are a, an EU citizen, your tuition fee comes to around 2,000, just over 2,000 uh, euro per year, which is, I think, doable. The quality of medical education in Dutch universities is recognized. There's a number of very prestigious ones. Groningen, which I just mentioned, Leiden, Utrecht, Amsterdam, Twente, several of uh, the universities I have mentioned now, both in the Netherlands and all of the universities in England, require the BMAT uh, as their entry examination. If you want to learn more about the BMAT, just type BMAT. This is the biomedical access test, uh, and you can gain more information by Googling it. Uh, essentially, a test of uh, thinking skills plus uh, um, mathematics, problem solving, uh, biology and chemistry. All right, uh, so much for the deluxe option. Let me now take you to option number two, which is the difficult option. The difficult option is essentially not so difficult, but it is uh, the option of studying medicine in the German speaking countries. Uh, and by that, I mean, of course, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And by the way, in Switzerland, you can also study in French, uh, all right? As you know, there's both possibilities in Switzerland. Uh, the difficult option happens to also be the cheapest option, because if you study in Switzerland, Austria, or Germany, your tuition fees will be very close to zero, believe it or not, per year. They won't be exactly zero, but they will be very close to zero. This is because the universities we're talking about here are public universities uh, and because of a 
I consider very progressive policy on the part of these um, three countries, offering to students um, this possibility of studying medicine and other subjects, by the way, with free tuition. Incidentally, that is not only just for German citizens or even just for European citizens, it is for everybody. So even if you are a so-called third country passport holder, you can study in these countries for a very minimal amount of money, usually under 500 euros of tuition per year. And those 500 euros are not really tuition, they're student services fees. And okay, so you might say then, what's the catch? Well, I called it the difficult option. And the reason why it's difficult is because there is this myth that circulates that learning German is impossible and that it would be impossible to learn German, blah, 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 to go and study medicine in Germany. The truth is it's not so difficult to study German. And if you go to a Goethe Institute uh, and reach a B1 level, you can then continue at a Graduierten Kolleg, which is kind of the German equivalent of a foundational year in preparation for medical studies. I did call it the difficult option, and that is because medical studies in all three of these countries are very, very demanding. Entry is selective. There is something called the numerus clausus, and that means uh, that uh, there's limited number of spaces and the universities choose the students competitively. So those who have the best grades. All right, uh, in Germany, for example, 5% of student places for medical studies are destined for foreign students. So 5% is uh, significant, but still it's not that many places and the universities will obviously choose the most motivated, the highest scoring students. So, a final word about studying in the German speaking countries. If you choose to go to study in any of these countries, I recommend that you go to the smaller universities simply because it's less anonymous and you will have closer contact with your professors and tutors. So, for universities in Germany, it is kind of accepted wisdom that it's a good idea to go to the former East uh, German universities. I'm thinking of places like Jena or Leipzig, simply because these universities have received uh, a very, very modern equipment and they're very kind of up to date uh, in their infrastructure. All right. Um, one final word, if you decide to study in Switzerland, uh, the diploma that you get uh, will not be a federal diploma, which is what you would get if you were Swiss, but it is a diploma that entitles you to practice medicine, just not privately. You can't open a private practice in Switzerland unless you have the federal diploma, but you don't get the federal diploma unless you are uh, a citizen or you have the permisse, right? So the landed immigrant status. However, a diploma from a Swiss university is certainly recognized and you are allowed to work in Switzerland for some time, uh, just under the supervision of other doctors, you can't open up your own clinic or your own office. And, um, a final note about Austria. Again, it's more uh, advisable to study in the smaller faculties. I'm thinking about Innsbruck and Graz rather than going to the bureaucratic monster of Vienna. Good. Moving right along. Oh, and uh, the uh, accession exam, so that the admissions test in Germany is called the T, the TMS, uh, and uh, for Austria it's called the MEDAT, M-E-D-A-T, which you can Google and find out more about. Good. That was the second option, difficult option. First option, luxury. Second option, difficult. It's difficult because of its selective and because you have to learn German. Third option, I call this realistic. The realistic, realistic option uh, encompasses studies in medicine in Eastern Europe. This is a realistic option because uh, with due preparation, uh, you can access uh, a number of uh, excellent medical faculties uh, whose diploma will entitle you to practice medicine in the European Union. You will be taught, uh, thankfully not in Hungarian, which is a very difficult language. 
you will be taught either in English or for those of you who want to study in German, you will be taught in German. This is relevant because a lot of German students do not manage to get into the German universities because they're so selective. So they decide to come and study in uh, uh, Hungary, either in Budapest or in Debrecen, in Seged or in Pech. There's a number of uh, very good, very prestigious medical faculties in, in Hungary. All right, uh, so the cost of studying medicine in Hungary is approximately the 16 to 17,000 uh, euro per year. All right. Uh, that's regardless of whether you are a European citizen or not, 16 to $17,000 a year. People come and study medicine in Hungary from all over the world, notably from Germany, from Israel, from Japan, from China, from Korea, uh, lots of Scandinavians also. So it's a good option. Uh, the university, one of the universities that I um, work for that I'm a faculty member of actually prepares students for the medical studies in Hungary. We have intensive one semester programs to prepare you for the entry exams at all the medical faculties in Hungary. These uh, studies, this knowledge that you gain can also be applied for entry at other universities in other countries. So, and uh, my college is McDaniel College. We can look it up, mcdaniel.hu. All right. Um, further, uh, it regards to the uh, Eastern European realistic option, there is uh, the option of studying in Poland. For example, at the University of Poznan, you can study uh, medicine. Also, interestingly, you can gain graduate access to the medical programs there. That means that if you have already studied another BA in a different field, let us say biology or psychology, then this university allows you to uh, complete the medical studies in an accelerated fashion. In this sense, uh, the program at Poznan resembles somewhat the programs that you will find in North America or the Philippines uh, where medicine is a postgraduate rather than an undergraduate uh, study. All right, uh, so Poland is an interesting option. Further, Slovakia in Bratislava, there's a good medical faculty where you will be able to study medicine in English. Uh, again, the uh, biggest consideration, the most important thing for you to look at in all of the things that you decide to apply to in all of the faculties is is this diploma that I'm going to get accredited? In other words, when I receive this diploma, after years of hard work, will people recognize it? And where will they recognize it? Will they recognize it in the country where I wish to practice? Or if I wish to attend practicing in another country, will that country recognize it? Okay, so to give you an example, our Hungarian diplomas in medicine are recognized across Europe. Here in Hungary, a doctor's a salary is not that great. So a lot of people come to Hungary to study medicine and then they take their Hungarian diplomas and they practice it, uh, medicine in Germany. For example, in Munich, where the salaries will be uh, much higher than in Hungary. Or they go back home to Israel where their diploma will be recognized. We have a number of students also who come from Iran. So it's very interesting sometimes that we find in our classes uh, a variety of people, sometimes from countries that don't get along so well with each other, but they, the students, get along wonderfully with each other. All right, so, so that was the realistic option, option of studying in uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, Bulgaria, by the way, also has a possibility of studying uh, medicine. Good. And finally, I would like to take you to what I call the exotic. Uh, this is the fourth possibility. It's a little added plus that I'm giving you. The exotic uh, possibility involves uh, studying in more tropical places of the world. Um, many students choose to study in the Caribbean. So there is a Caribbean university that offers medical studies. Uh, Many, many students choose to go there 
among other reasons, because they were not able to gain uh, admission in Europe. Uh, the challenges of going to this university is uh, you may have to work hard to get accreditation for it. Uh, and secondly, uh, it, it's not cheap. Uh, all right. Um, and a final option, which is a little bit uh, a um, well-kept secret uh, um, about this uh, tropical exotic uh, uh, path for studying medicine is the Philippines. Uh, by the way, maybe not a place that's on your radar screen for studying medicine, but recently I've discovered it's actually a very intelligent option. Uh, medical studies in the Philippines are postgraduate studies. That means that just like in the US and in Canada, you get accepted to medical studies, not straight after high school, but first you have to do a bachelor's degree, usually in biology, biology or zoology or biochemistry. So you do a bachelor's degree in a biomedical science, and then you gain access to a four year program in the Philippines. So it's exactly like it is in the United States. A further similarity, the language of instruction is English. And I'm sure that's a big plus for many of you. Another huge plus, you have to pay, yes, but the tuition fees are quite reasonable. They vary a lot, by the way, whether you are studying in Manila or say Cebu, these are the two places where the two, uh, let's say, most prestigious medical faculties are to be found. Uh, so the University, La Salle, University of St. Thomas, uh, National University in Manila, and the University of Cebu. These are all actually very, very good medical faculties. And I should point out to you that increasingly, European countries uh, are acknowledging both uh, nursing and medical degrees uh, 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 issued by these universities. The process is never uh, a joy ride. It's never a walk in the park and it's never 100% easy. You, you have to wait. They might ask you to prove certain things. You might, you might still have to take certain subjects again, but generally, let us say tendentiously, um, the general tendency is that the medical, the quality of medical studies in the Philippines is increasingly being recognized. Okay, so just wanna tell you, that's a very, interesting option. Medical studies in the Philippines are in fact, in many ways, organized in extremely similar ways to the way they are organized in the United States. Four years, uh, one year and a half uh, is mainly preclinical with uh, a biochemistry, general anatomy, histology, uh, biostatistics, and then uh, from approximately, give or take the third semester, you will start having contact with uh, patients, uh, supervised uh, patient visits, uh, and you will learn about the different systems. So internal medicine, uh, general surgery, pediatrics, gynecology, neurology, psychiatry. So I think this is an option very much worth considering. Again, the most intelligent thing for you to do is to first inform yourself and do some soul searching to know what country you would like to end up in as a practitioner, as a, as a practitioner of medicine, whether it's in patient care or it's in research. And once you have an idea where you would like to be, find out uh, what is the situation with the recognition of foreign diplomas. So, good. So to summarize, four options, deluxe with England, very high fees, very high quality, very selective. Number two, German countries, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, very low fees, very affordable, but you have to work very smart to get high grades and you have to learn German. And that might mean going to Germany a year or two before. And then there's the realistic option, which involves uh, going into medical schools in Hungary or Poland, or Slovakia, or Bulgaria, 
interesting option, very valuable. Diplomas are recognized. Fees are not cheap, but they're nowhere near as expensive as the deluxe option. And uh, the studies can be in English uh, and your diploma is recognized. Uh, our school, mcdaniel.hu, can prepare you for the entry exams. Uh, and uh, finally, there's the very simpatical option of studying in a tropical country in a diploma that is uh, taught in English and structured very much like an American or a Canadian, which is the Philippine option. All right, uh, I hope that this information will have been of some use to you. Do your research well, know what you're getting into. And uh, I am available for private consultations uh, through SRT if you would like to get more specific about your inquiries concerning medical studies possibilities. Thank you very much for your attention.